Hello, I'm Gavin Horgan, Headmaster of Millfield School in Somerset, the largest co-educational boarding school in the UK. Welcome to the Millfield Way podcast. Here, you'll hear from teachers, coaches and students from Millfield and Millfield Prep School. Millfield is traditionally different, and this is the Millfield Way. Hello and welcome to this Millfield Way podcast in conversation with Adam Sutton. My name's Liz Webb and for this episode I'm delighted to be joined by Chartwell's nutritionist Adam Sutton. Good afternoon Adam. Hi Liz, how are you? I'm well thank you, how are you? Yeah not too bad thank you. Excellent. And so, Adam, you joined us in March this year and, and you replaced our previous school n- nutritionist. Um, give us an outline of your role at Millfield. Yeah. So, like you said, I'm employed by Chartwell as the catering provider here at Millfield. And the main responsibilities I have are within student education, both within the sports department and then across the school. I um, also do a lot of one to one support, whether that's sporting requirements, um, requests through staff, pastoral support again when needed. And then also making sure that the dining halls are really educational, informative and nice environment to be in. OK, and so what did you do before joining Chartwells? So I was a, it was a graduate role, so I was a studied at university leading into this, did a undergraduate degree in sport and exercise science at the University of Birmingham. And then after that, I did a master's degree in sport and exercise nutrition, um, just because the nutrition um, sort of aspects really appealed to me uh, from the undergraduate degree and really sort of keen cook as well. So it was sort of a natural step on. And then, yeah, just um, came into this role up following, following university. So what's your favourite dish to cook? Oh, I love a curry. Yeah, I do lots of different types of curries. I think that's the best thing to do. And was it, so was it partway through your course that you became interested in focusing on nutrition Mm -hmm. or um, how how did that come about? Yeah, so we had a module in second year called a sports nutrition module and the sort of the biochemistry and bioscience of that really appealed to me. And then big food, you always have been. So it was such a, um, a natural link to sort of combine my interest in science with food and then sporting performance as well. Oh, right. Interesting. And so, um, as well as food, what are your interests and hobbies outside of school? Yeah. So, big big sports fan, sort of watch a lot of sport. Um, and then personally, t- um, I'm a runner, so do a lot of um, road running and sort of long distance stuff. Um, been doing that for a few years now, after previously playing badminton when I was a youth athlete, and then sort of just gradually transitioned into focusing on running. Okay, yeah. so you've probably got quite a lot in common in terms of your own development with some of our students here at Millfield. Yeah, definitely. I think that help sort of being able to put myself in there she's not quite in sort of the sporting caliber of some of the athletes here but definitely um just the trying to be as best you can in your sport um something something i can relate to so since march um this year what changes have you made um and what things have you brought in um into the role yep so one of the big things that i sort of had as a focus was to relaunch a pre-existing initiative that was here called the eat to excel initiative um, just an attitude that we should all hold around nutrition. Every meal time is an opportunity to excel in sort of the strap line. So, um, giving that a rebrand and sort of a big lift and a big push was my main focus. Um, then I've also developed a sports nutrition curriculum where I work with a lot of different sports that we have here. Um, again, that leads back into the student education side of it. So, the curriculum has 13 modules in total, which sort of takes a student athlete from anywhere from just learning the basics about food to how we make choices depending on our training and then sort of, sort of setting them up for later life because a lot of the sixth formers here will go on to further education sort of being able to fend for yourself when at university sort of shopping cooking um, for yourself um, along with that side of it and then I've also been doing a lot of work with the um, catering team and team of head chefs here to make sure the sort of menu design overlaps quite nicely in a new sort of a nutritional balance sense. And are there certain things that um, the students generally ask you that they want to be eating? And and is that always healthy or do you have to really kind of make them think about their food choices? Yeah, I think a lot of it um, from what I've had to do is sort of battle a lot of myths. I think there's a lot of um, sort of the nature of the way nutrition, anyone can put something on social media or online now. And it's so easy to sort of take that as gospel. So I think sort of trying to fight through that and sort of, strip down the importance of basics rather than jumping to some article that someone's read or seen on Instagram. I think just stripping it back to what actually um, is the, are the fundamentals of nutrition. And so what do we do differently at Millfield in terms of our food offering um, that, that perhaps other schools don't do? Yeah, um, I think one of the big things coming here, as I've sort of observed and um, 
over the last few months have seen. The biggest things are the variety, so the menu rotates on a three-week cycle, um, sort of the main lunch and supper menu rotates on a three-week cycle, and then breakfast on a two-week cycle, just so there's never the exact same sort of combination of dishes throughout the term. Um, and I think the variety within that menu cycle of different meat dishes, different vegetarian dishes, and then the big thing is, that for me, that I think is amazing is the self-service salad bar, having the ability to have access to not just a load of individual um, salad and vegetable items, but large composite salads, um, whether that be a sort of containing a source of protein, complex carbohydrate, and the ability to make your own meal depending on that. Um, you're not just, ne- not just restricted to what's on the main counter. You can really customise and pick and choose with that self-service what you want to eat. And I think that's an amazing, amazing facility to have. And um, we know that Milford's well known for sport. Um, why do you think nutrition is so important for our athletes and, and what support do you have in place for them? Yeah, so nutrition is vital for sport and performance, especially in this age group of athletes because they're, they've got such large energy requirements for growth and development. And then when we put their large training volume, volumes and intensities on top, it's sort of fundamental that we're fueling that and food is our fuel at the end of the day, making sure that we can meet energy requirements. Um, but not just meeting energy requirements, but then it's also about ticking nutrient boxes and making sure we're not deficient in anything. Um, I think that's vital in such a busy, busy environment they have here because they're always on the go with lessons, multiple training. Um, so it's really, really important here in this environment. Um, and I think what we've got in support for pl- in sorry what. Um, things we have in support in place for to support those athletes is the ability to go back up for seconds if they need it um because obviously we've got massive challenges in the volume of students that go through having to manage portion size initially is a, is a challenge but then sort of allowing students to come back up to seconds to meet those fueling requirements um, and make sure they're aware of the need for them to have to be able to do that um and then other support in place would be the um education curriculum so making sure they can have the have the knowledge of like knowledge is power in the dining hall so make sure they can make the correct choices um for their training and for their sport and then leading on from the eat to eat to excel initiative as well uh, sort of a signage and labeling system in there to allow them to make the best choices um for their sport so they're, they're, they're the main sort of pillars of um, support we have in place and are there particular groups of students say I mean, I would probably lean towards perhaps our swimming cohort who do a lot of training. Um, do they need um, more calorie intake and more calories because of their training than and perhaps rugby players uh, compared to some of the other sports that we offer? Yeah, I'd say fundamentally those ones with sort of larger training volumes and training demands will have a larger energy requirement. Um, but then within that, you've got massive individual variations. So energy requirements is something that's so hard to sort of pinpoint um, and say an exact, everyone wants to know an exact number of, um, exact number of amount of energy they need to eat, but doing so in practice is so challenging. And I think it's making them aware of just when their training volumes are larger, making sure they are fueling that with the larger food intake. And that's fundamental. And so how, how do you go about getting in front of the students and educating on, educating them um, about nutrition? Do you um, speak to different sports groups on their own or do you go into the houses? How does that work? It's a blend of both, really. So with a lot of the sports, um, sports department, it works with, I mean, good communication with the heads of sports and the directors to make sure um, we can provide, able to provide support. And then the way it's tending to work at the moment as we're flowing through the curriculum is each sport sort of dedicating either a lunch session or um, a Saturday session or after school, however it works best for their programme. And then doing um, whole squad sessions to m- work through the main modules of the curriculum. And then as we sort of go up the performance pyramid, looking at the sort of the more, the more high achievers, going into sort of, if that's then progressing into small group Q&A sessions, focus groups. And then at the top of that, we have the one-to-one support that I can offer. Um, and I also do get um, a lot of house parents contact me um, and try and get me in in the evening. So I've been going to a few um, roll calls to try and just sort of give a few nutritional messages, little t- a few talks just to increase the awareness and then combining Q&A as well. Um, I think it's really good because then they, the students can get out of the session what they want to. And how engaged are the students? Are, the, is it, are they interested in learning about this? Is it something that they're really keen to know more about? I think massively, yeah. Everyone loves food and I think it's such, a, <laughs> it's such an important part of social life as well. And I think they are really switched on to the importance of food for performance and the majority do want to learn more um, and just sort of 
seeing it as another pillar to their performance that they train their skills fitness um having that nutrition is another thing to that uh, to their performance is only going to benefit them so i think yeah most of them are switched on to that which is good to see and I think one of the most popular days of the week here is probably Fish and Chip Friday. Yeah. Probably not the most healthy of meals during the week um, for staff and students. But So what, what would you advise in terms of what they should have on, on a Friday? I think this, go, um, this sort of opens up a lot of questions, but it massively builds into my philosophy of there's no such thing as sort of a one-off unhealthy healthy meal it's all looking at eating patterns over the course of that three-week menu cycle so realistically if someone wanted to have the fish and chips um on that friday it's not necessarily the worst thing they can do not necessarily the best or the but then in, the, in nutrition there's no perfect choice but then leading on to that there are better choices they can make so on fish friday with them we've got the fish and chips available there's always either a grilled salmon or a grilled mackerel available sort of like a cleaner fish to have um, and that can be combined with one of the composite carbohydrate salads on the salad bar so i think there's always a better choice but it leads back into the importance of understanding that a balanced diet is over the course of three weeks a month much longer than just sort of one-off eating opportunities Okay, fantastic. Um, so we touched a lot on sport there, but nutrition is also important for um, academics, isn't it, and feeding the brain. Um, can you give us an idea of how nutrition sport at Millfield um, assists our students for their learning in the classroom? Yeah, I think, and this is with conversations I've had with students, it's massively underestimated the importance of making sure we are fueling ourselves for academic success. Um, as you said, like our, our brain uses um, food as fuel as well. So if we're not giving it enough energy, if we're not giving it enough nutrients it needs, we're not going to be able to concentrate as and get the most out of the lessons we need to. So um, I think it goes back to all main meals being able to provide in the dining hall, providing a source of complex carbohydrate uh, for a slow release energy to support concentration both in the morning um, morning lessons and then uh, in the lunch sessions after, um, uh, in the afternoon sessions, sorry, after lunch. And make it goes back to that education piece as well for example on on a thursday we have pancakes as one of the breakfasts it's sort of educating them onto the fact of yeah there's nothing wrong with having the pancake and syrup but thinking about what could be the consequence if that's all we're going to have are we going to get a sort of mid-morning crash how's that then going to affect lessons and maybe if, if it is a bowl of porridge combined with that a better um a better option just to support that concentration throughout the morning and I think you've always already mentioned that um, on the serveries when people come up for lunch, there's there's a plate which demonstrates um, what would be a healthy choice for that meal. Um, was that something that um, you've just introduced, and and what was the reason for for doing that? Yeah, that was one of the, one of the things that I've introduced as well. And I think massively is because we eat with our eyes. If we can sort of see what a portion size should be, and get got lots of colour on the plate. Um, and sort of just ticking every sort of boxes of the balanced meal groups, then that's just only going to help the decisions moving on to the servery. So if we can see that, it sort of can help set up better choices rather than just going through the motions and sort of um, just getting what you're given and sort of accepting it rather than taking ownership and seeing, okay, that's what a meal, a meal I could make out of this service. Let's go and put it into action. Okay, fantastic. Um, and you work across both the senior and the prep school. Um, how have you adapted the nutrition offering and guidance that, to target both those age groups? Because obviously prep school we've got um, in the pre-prep, we start from two. Um, and then in the prep school, we're starting at age seven up to 13. And then obviously senior school 13 to 18. So very different needs, I would imagine, for those developing children. How, how do you work with that? Yeah, massively. Both. Um, I think the main thing you could, would pick out is portion sizes and energy requirements obviously going to change throughout that. So it's making sure that um, serving staff are sort of aware of the requirements and how much they should be put on the plate. Um, but fundamentally, it doesn't have any difference in terms of nutrition and making sure we are consuming every meal group, um, protein, carbohydrate, lots of fruit and vegetables in there as well for essential vitamins and minerals. But one of the key things that I've changed moving into the prep school is carrying in the Eat to Excel initiative at the senior school into the prep school, but just making it an age appropriate version. So for this, um, for an example, the all the f- major food groups have their own superhero character and as pupils progress through the surgeries, they have to make the full superhero meal. So I think that's just one thing we've sort of done to make it more age appropriate and make the dining hall fun and sort of seeing how we can um, impact behaviour in just sort of a much more appropriate way. And I've been able to, I got into a um, 
one of the pre-prep classes, one of the reception classes and sort of did a session with them talking through the superheroes and they absolutely loved it and sort of getting them excited about food and the bat of unhealthy food as well. Um, and then the teacher fed back that they were talking about it all through the morning and identifying foods on their plate. And I think that's so important at such a young age, build good habits and sort of awareness of what a balanced meal looks like. And do you also work with students um, that perhaps have food intolerances or um, are international students that may want to choose to eat certain things and not eat, uh, eat other things? How do you work with them? Yeah, so um, what we do in those, such, in those situations is we um, <coughs> make options aware, uh, make options available. Um, and a lot of the time, just because of the nature of the volume of people going through the dining hall, a lot of those things have to be either asked for at the servery or are, uh, made on request. So, for example, in the morning... Um, we can make gluten-free porridge, we can make dairy-free porridge um, and just making students aware that they can request that and that will be made made to order for them. I think that's the biggest way that we can sort of um, cater for all those individuals. And then the international students, I think, um, massively different cuisines and taste profiles that everyone prefers. Um, and that just goes back to we can't, you can't sort of please the, everyone, every single person going through the dining hall, but making sure that they are able to make meals which do satisfy them. So, for example, if it's using a classic example of spice, um, a dish might be quite mild, but then we've always got chili flakes available or other spice, um, hot sauces of, um, for them to make things that suit their taste profile better. Um, so what are your three main takeaways, Adam, for our listeners with regards to nutrition at Millfield? Yeah, I would say sort of if I were to break into three different things, it would be balance, um, not focusing on those specific meal opportunities and looking at the whole menu cycle as a total 21 days and just thinking, OK, a single meal might not be balanced or I might not have made a most balance, the most optimal or balanced choice then. But over the course of the week, everything is there for you to make a sort of a healthy balanced diet i think that's key um and that sort of keeps a good relationship with food as well and at the end of the day food's a really big part of our social life and every and so many social interactions are evolved around food so keeping that healthy relationship i think is really important um secondly i would say simplicity just breaking down some of the noise you hear on online and social media about uh, nutrition fads and the next next big thing but just keeping it simple um, and thinking about a balanced meal is nothing more than a meal that contains a source of protein complex carbohydrate and then really at least two of your five a day and then finally is purposeful education um, through labeling um, in the dining hall um, different food groups and different sort of graphical resources for students to use um, targeted sessions um, to increase that education um, if that's in sport or just cross school, um, not just to improve nutritional knowledge and maximise the environment whilst here at Millfield, but setting students up um, for a much longer sort of relationship with food moving forward out of school. Um, and yeah, that would be the sort of main things I would summarise it with. Fantastic. Um, so if our listeners want to find out more about nutrition at Millfield, where can they look? Yep, so there's information about the food offering on the Millfield School website, and then there's also Millfield Nutrition social media accounts, um, both Twitter and Instagram. Okay, fantastic. Um, thank you for telling us all about um, nutrition at Millfield um, this afternoon, Adam. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the Milford Way podcast in conversation with Adam Sutton. Thank you and goodbye.